Story verse, I believe it was last week. Well, it only takes one memory, though, right? <laughs> one little gray cell. Uh, do you remember what it was? No. <laughs> he knows it was two, but don't remember what it was. All right. Uh, <laughs> who does remember the reference of the verse that, verses sorry, that I gave you last week? One, two. Three, a nod, not a, not a hand. The reference okay, <laughs> that's why the hand didn't go up. I know the reference. I did not memorize it. All right, um, Rita, did you want to say it? Yeah, go for it. Everything, both of it, all, all the way from the start to the beginning, to the end. 24 and 25, yes. Good, good. Did you want to say it? Great, good. Very good. Anyone else want to take a stab at it? No? All right. You sure, Nicholas? No. Junior's right behind you smiling too, so I could call him out too. All right, um, <clears throat> let's go to Leviticus chapter number 16. Leviticus chapter 16. Last week <clears throat> we were talking about the uh, cleansing of the leopard, leper. This week we're going to be talking about the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Who can tell me what the Day of Atonement was? Anybody really quickly? Yes? Okay. For? For sin, yes, okay. The Day of Atonement was a single day every year, set aside, special day, uh, that the high priest would offer sacrifice and go into the Holy of Holies and first for himself, cleansing himself from sin, and then uh, a sacrifice for the people once a year. It was the sacrifice of sin once a year. Now, this was, the, this was different from all the other sacrifices. There still were perpetual sacrifices happening all the time, uh, but this was a special day set aside for the high priest to do this, this one thing, and it was one day every year. Now, as we go through this, we're going to look at a couple of different aspects of it. The reason that we need the atonement, the, the, uh, the way that the atonement was made, and then how it was performed, and how we can compare that to Christ, uh, our, our atonement, it was done once. So the, this is just a, uh, a sacrifice that could not actually take away sin, it simply atoned for it for a time. Uh, Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So let's go ahead and read about this in Leviticus 16, verse number 1. Leviticus 16.1, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. And you shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and he shall be girded with a linen girdle, 
and with a linen miter he shall be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. Remember that this, this particular garment is different from the normal garment that he always wore. These were special and set aside and holy. And he only had them for this purpose going into the Holy of Holies. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. And he shall take the blood, <clears throat> he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth upon them among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement of the holy place. This is important. He is doing this by himself only. There's no other priests or anyone else there. He is alone until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all his congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the, Lord, unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about and he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his fingers seven, seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquity unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go of the goat in the wilderness. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for uh, your teaching, the Bible that we have. And most of all, Lord, we thank you that you have taken care of this once and for all for us. Lord, Lord as we look at this uh, aspect of the law given and, and how we compare that to what you have done for us, on the cross, Lord, we just pray that you'd give clarity and understanding. Uh, set me aside. Help me not to say anything that would hinder uh, your spirit. And Lord, we ask that you would just bless the time in Jesus' name. So we have here uh, the sin offering made for the children of Israel. This is done once a year. If we go over to just a few pages over in your book, probably Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Uh, verse 26 speaks about the Day of Atonement again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 27 of chapter 23, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month shall, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it shall be that, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work 
It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even from even until even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. So this was a very important day. Nobody was supposed to do anything except focus on what's going on, this Day of Atonement. And it was a day when the high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies for that sacrifice. And why did he have to go in? Because of the trespasses and the transgressions. And in, uh, in verse 16 of our passage, 16 to 16, it says, And because of their transgressions and all, in all their sins, we have transgression means simply going against the law of God. And they were given laws to follow. And they had a way of, of uh, obeying and behaving. And if they stepped out of those ways, as you and I know we often do, um, then we need to offer sacrifice. And so that's the reason that we have this Day of Atonement. Uh, Numbers 14.41 says, And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord, but it shall not, shall not prosper. So we have... Uh, example throughout the scriptures of transgressions. You and I both know that we can't uh, go through a day without uh, going against something that God may have said, whether in thought or in deed. Uh, we often have trials and troubles and tribulations. We don't always pass those tests as we should. So we have sin in our life and we have transgressions and that's why we need the atonement. Uh, we trespass the law as a, as a we're told in Matthew 6, 14, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not, forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We ought to realize the, the benefit that we have from the salvation and from the forgiveness that God gives us. And we ought to pass that along to others. Um, we have iniquity. Who can tell me what iniquity is? No one? Ross wants to answer them all. He's the... Anyone? Yeah. Immorality. Um, Self-will. Iniquity. We have... Uh, Romans 6 talks about the... Yielding ourselves to righteousness, not to unrighteousness. We have that flesh, but which direction we, we go with. Um, in Leviticus chapter 4, we find that uh, ignorance is not an excuse because in 4.13 it says, and if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, meaning they didn't know that they were sinning, but they still have gone against what God said, um, and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. So the world wants to think, oh, well, as long as I don't hear it. So you'll, you'll go out on the street and you start passing out tracts. And as soon as they see the name of Jesus Christ on that, they cringe and walk away. Why? Because they think that if I don't know, it doesn't bother me. If I can just brush it under the carpet, as it were, it doesn't matter. But God said that, you know, even in their ignorance, they're, they're sinning. And uh, we know that if we know, uh, if we know to do right and don't do it, we know that that is also sin. So found in James 4.17, we have many things that you and I can associate with regarding this need for atonement. And God promised that he would give us that, that salvation. Gospel of John, verse one, uh, sorry, chapter 1, verse 29, when John was there, he said, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So we have a Christ who is going to take care of this sin in our life. And the atonement is necessary that we might be able to have that sin dealt with. Now, we'll, we all know, I mean, most of you here would know, once you receive Christ as your Savior, there is now no condemnation uh, to them which are in Christ. But we have uh, this example given to us by the high priest. And as we go through the, the, 
scope of this atonement. We know what it's for, for sin. Uh, for all, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It is everyone. No one is escaping the need for atonement. We go to the scope and what he has to do. And Aaron, in verse number 6, has to first be cleansed. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. He had to be clean first. Oh, you say, well, he was the high priest. He, he should have been living right and doing right. Kind of let you know where even the high priests stand. God says they still have the flesh. They still have sin in them. They still have to have atonement on their life. So most people would hold up, in fact, some religions hold up the, the leaders of those religions as people who are a, outside of these things and, and have no need for that. But God said all have sinned. And it doesn't matter whether you're a, a pastor or a preacher, you still have sin in your life and you still need to be cleansed. You still need that atonement. So Aaron had to be cleansed first. So he offered his, his sacrifice first. And then in verse uh, 16, he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression. So he had to cleanse the holy place and the tabernacle had to be cleansed. In verse 18, and he shall go unto the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar. So the altar had to be uh, cleansed and made whole. And then we read in, in verses uh, well, 22 that he should the, go into the wilderness. But if you read in verse 23, And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garment which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garment and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. He has uh, to cleanse the congregation as a whole. Now, we know that um, if you go to the, the New Testament for a few verses, First John chapter 2. We look at Christ in this as the high priest. First John chapter 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he, Jesus Christ, is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We have, uh, we go out and we try to tell people about Christ. The goal is to, to give them an example of who Christ is and what he has done. Christ came to this earth to pay for the sins of the whole world. That's done. Everyone who receives Christ's payment for sin is saved. If you don't receive that payment, you don't believe that he has done that for you, they're not saved. And that is the problem with the world. They think that we can do it our way. I'm good enough. I'll do it my way. God says, no, Christ is the propitiation for the sins of the whole world. And only he lived a sinless and perfect life to do that. Amen. And he alone died on the cross. None of the disciples died with him. None, none, nobody else stood next to him when that time came. He was crucified with thieves. Nobody could mistake what they did. They weren't thinking, they're, oh, they're part of the salvation. They were dying for their sins. But Christ died without sin, Amen. by himself, on the cross, so that we could have that propitiation for sins. <clears throat> we, the verses are very familiar, so I'll just... <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he, begave, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world already had the condemnation, and they were without sin. 
they, they were without salvation. And so they had to have a, a man come along and give them that salvation. Hebrews 9.26 says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So this, this day of atonement, this set time every year where the children of Israel come together and they have this ritual, this sacrifice, this process, they did that every year as a, a need because the, the blood could not do what Christ could do for us on the cross. Christ did it once and it was done. Now, how this was all done, as far as the ritual and all that stuff goes, this where we'll spend a bit more time on it, only the high priest could do this service. None of the other priests could do it. It was only done by him. And if it wasn't done correctly, he didn't survive. So it was done very, very specifically and very, well, with trepidation, really. If your job was going to, if you did, if you did your job incorrectly and you were going to die from it, you would be very careful about how you went about your job. And this was the case with the high priest. He had to be very specific and very careful and very um, honest about it. So only the high priest could do this. We talked about him going in by himself. And uh, Christ died on the cross by himself. Hebrews 1 says it like this, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down, on the right hand of the majesty on high. He himself went in to the holiest of all. The priest wore these different garments that we talked about, these garments that were holy. They were not the standard blue and gold and all that. They were white and spotless. And Christ was the only one who could offer a perfect sacrifice, a sinless sacrifice. Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Christ was the spotless sacrifice, holy and set apart, the only one that could offer the payment for sin. The wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have sin in our lives simply because we were born of Adam. And there's nothing that we can do to avoid that. But Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice. Hebrews 7.26 said, For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Christ was the only one who could do these things for us. Second Corinthians 5 says that he knew no sin. Amen. So we have the priest going in spotless and white, and then we have Christ as our high priest going in undefiled and spotless. We look at these goats that are slain. They were supposed to be... Um, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two ghosts, in verse number 8 of chapter 16, our text, on the one, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. 
<clears throat> but the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So we have these goats that are uh, brought in and they're part of the offering. And they, they talk about the one lot for the Lord and one lot for a scapegoat. I believe I want John chapter 10. John chapter 10 says in verse 15, As for the Father, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. So Christ, Jesus Christ, offered himself as the the lamb that was going to be, the goat that was going to be slain, the uh, sacrifice, he laid it down. He did not, he did not, uh, he was not killed out of his own will. They brought him to sacrifice him, but he laid his life down for us. And then, of course, we have the gospel message given to us in 1 Corinthians 15, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received out that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And so one goat was uh, meant to be the scapegoat, the scapegoat taken out. And uh, I thought I had, well, maybe I just did that in my own study. I don't have the verses in here that I thought I had for that. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe we'll get to that shortly. The living goat. Here, okay, I'm jumping ahead of myself in my notes. So then we have the, uh, the, the slain goat, and the blood is taken into the holiest of all. So if you're in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9. <clears throat> so the, the blood, the lot that the, the goat, the lot that was the Lord's and the goat that was slain, was the blood was then taken into the holiest of holies, and it was sprinkled as a sacrifice for the atonement of the children of Israel. Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 7 speaks about this. But into the second went the high priest only, alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that, the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for them for the time then present, in which we were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them unto the time of redemption. But Christ, become, uh, Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. So Christ's sacrifice on the cross uh, was the eternal redemption that we needed. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifers sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So the blood taken into the holiest of, holiest of all was Christ placed on the mercy seat. And Christ in his uh, sacrifice went to God for us and became that atonement. So what happens from that atonement is we then now have no more condemnation for sin. Uh, Romans 3.25, uh, whom, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past 
through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So belief in Christ and in this, the blood that was paid is what keeps us from going to hell. All have uh, come short of the glory of God. And then we look at this uh, living goat here in verse 20 and 21 of the scapegoat when he had made an end of reconciling the holy place, the tabernacle of the congregation, in the altar he shall bring the live goat, and Aaron shall, uh, Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live, live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by hand of a fit man into the wilderness. So this goat is then identified with sin. Uh, Isaiah 53 Isaiah 53, 6. Isaiah 53, 6 talks about Christ. All we like sheep have gone astray. In us we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, speaking of Christ, the iniquity of us all. Christ bore the sin on the cross for us. We have uh, <clears throat> for Second Corinthians five twenty one says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we have him being uh, bearing our sin on the cross. The, the goat, the second goat that was bore those uh, sins of all the children of Israel was sent away into the wilderness. And uh, the liking that we have of that is what God... Uh, likens uh, our sin to. He remembers it no more. And the, the goat is led away and it's sent off just away and we never hear anything more about the goat. Uh, Psalm 103, Psalm 103, verse 12. Let's go back to verse, uh, nine, verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarding us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So he has removed them to be remembered no more. We see the, uh, a similar verse over in Jeremiah Speaking of remembering them no more, Jeremiah 31, verse 34. Jeremiah 31, verse 34. And they shall teach, uh, they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. So Christ has promised us that we can get out of this condemnation. If you want to look at that in Romans, Romans chapter uh, 5, Romans 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Romans 8, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We have the opportunity today, if you haven't received Christ as your Savior, to get away from the condemnation that is from sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
This example of the Day of Atonement that was supposed to be a set time once a year as a, uh, a covering by blood of the sins of Israel came to a culmination on the cross when Jesus Christ laid down his life as that ultimate sacrifice, the sacrifice that did not have to be repeated. He set it down. He laid down his life. He shed his blood. He paid the debt of sin that you and I owe. And today we still, to this day, still have sin in our lives. We still owe a debt, but we are covered. We no longer have that. When you look at the way the, uh, my, uh, this is going back many years. I don't know if this will work. You can see. So we have uh, Nathan Bard at the top. List of sins, lots of them, right? It's covered. There's probably more than that. But then we have Christ's life and nothing. And what Christ did was he took that list, put his name at the top, and put my name over there. And now he sees no sin because of the blood. Doesn't mean that there's not sin in my life. Doesn't mean that I can't, I shouldn't be. Uh, <laughs> Regularly asking God to forgive me of sin, keeping my relationship right and clean with Him, just means that I have no more condemnation for sin. And I can go forward in His righteousness and not my own. So this, uh, this offering that was made had to be repeated every year. It had to, uh, had to be done once a year, done regularly. Anyone who didn't participate, we read that was going to be... Uh, taken out of the congregation. It was a very important time. And it always had to be repeated. But then when Christ came, he made it so it did not have to be repeated. Um, if you want to, we'll finish up in Hebrews. Finish up this lesson in Hebrews. Again, looking at some of the verses that we've already looked at, but just kind of tying it up, knowing that we're done once and for all. Firstly, um, Hebrews 9.26, once again, this is a verse that we've actually seen many times in our teachings. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once... In the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. We used to have these sacrifices on a regular basis, once a year. Now we have but one sacrifice on the cross, and it's done. Let's go ahead and go into Hebrews chapter number 10. We'll read these verses here. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse number 10. Hebrews 10:10 10, 10, by the which will we uh, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins but this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool by one offering, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now when where remission of these is, there is, now, uh, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water." When Christ died on the cross, <clears throat> what happened to the veil that was in the temple? 
split open. And it was not a small curtain. And it was torn into, some would say miraculously. It was done by the Holy Spirit saying, there's no, now no more separation. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we have access to God directly. We don't have to go through a priest. We don't have to go through anyone else. We can talk directly to God because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. <clears throat> the world doesn't want to put their faith and trust in that sacrifice. And so they look at this Bible and they go, yeah, I, it's just a book. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't because they don't have what it takes to understand the book. They don't have the Spirit of God living in them. They don't have that. They have not accepted and put their faith and trust. But as soon as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're saved, then the Spirit beareth witness of itself and it helps you understand and grow and know these things. And He did it once. And that sacrifice on the cross made it so that the high priest was no longer needed and we could go directly to Him. The Day of Atonement for us is the day that you receive Christ as your Savior. Amen. One day He's coming back, and He's going to take us all with Him, and only those who have received Him will go. Those who have not will have to deal with the consequences of those decisions. So as you're here, standing now, breathing, talking, behaving, doing whatever. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the day that you should receive Christ. And if you don't, then your sins are not covered. We don't change, but we have Christ living in us. We are still sinners, but now we have salvation from that sin. And we don't have to live after it. We can choose to live after the way that God showed us in the Bible. We'll have a, for the memory verse for next week, we'll do uh, Leviticus 17, 11, the one I read at the beginning. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. It is the blood of Christ that makes the atonement for you and I, Nothing else, no good works, no giving to the church, no giving to charities, no being kind to your neighbor. It's all good stuff, but it's not going to save you. Amen. But Christ made a way, and you have to accept the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by Lord, thank you for the day of atonement that you have given us, and thank you for making that way for all who will believe. And Lord, as we go about our daily walk, help us to be mindful of those around us who have not received you as their Savior. Help us to be a light and a help to those. Guide and direct our conversation that it would be pleasing and glorifying to you. And Lord, most of all, help us to remember that day as we go about our day that we can rejoice and be glad the fact that we are children of the living God. Guide and direct us uh, today. Be with the services to come that we would receive from you those things that we need in Jesus' name.